Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be looking at a very, very interesting admissions question from the University of Cambridge. This is a question on electrical circuits and if you're interested in applying for engineering at Cambridge University, have a look at their engineering admissions past papers and uh, I'll leave a link to their website. Okay, well, let's have a look at this question. This circuit shown in diagram contains six resistors and an ideal digital voltmeter. So we have three resistors here and then we have another parallel branch with some more resistance across there. What is the reading on the voltmeter which is between those branches? And this will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and attempt this question. Okay, well, let's try and solve this one. The first thing that I would like to do is just figure out how much current is going through the circuit. So those resistors here are in series. So across here, I'm going to have 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 ohms. And down here, I'll have 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is also 6 ohms. So the total resistance in the circuit, which will be equivalent to uh, essentially having um, let's say having a 12 volt power supply to a single resistor like that uh, the total resistance let's call that our total because they're connected in parallel will actually be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 raised to the power of minus 1 which is of course equal to 3 ohms this would mean that the current in the circuit can be found just using V is equal to IR. Therefore, I is going to be equal to the total EMF divided by the total resistance. So that's going to be 12 divided by 3. So this is 4 amps. So we have 4 amps going across here. We can just draw them down here. And because we have equal resistance across both parallel branches, the current will split equally. So we're going to have two amps across here and two amps across the lower branch. Now we have the resistance of each of the resistors and now we have the current that is flowing through them. This means that we could actually just simply use V is equal to IR for all of these individual resistors. So I'm going to apply V is equal to IR to this one, for this one, for this one, for this one, for this one, and for this one. So for the first one, we're going to have a current of 2 times a resistance of 1, which is just 2 volts. Using exactly the same uh, calculation for the second one, it will be 2 amps times 2 ohms, so it's going to be 4, 4 volts. Uh, for this one, it will be 3 times 2, so that's going to be 6 volts. Okay, let's do this one as well. So it's going to be 2 amps times 1, so it's going to be 2 volts. 2 times 2 is 4. 4, 4 volts, and 2 times 3 is just 6 volts. Well, now that we have the voltages across all of the components, it should be relatively straight forward to find the potential difference between this point and this point. So because we have 4 volts here, 6 volts here, and 2 volts here, considering a loop, well, what we need to really consider in order to find the answer to this question is polarity. Let's assign the polarity of each of those components. In other words, what I mean by that is what part of the component is connected to the positive end, I'm just label that as positive, and what side of the component is connected to the negative end. So what I'm going to do is just do a simple plus and minus here, plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus, then plus and minus, plus and minus. Okay, well, so let's go around this loop. We're going to have 4 volts here, that's plus or minus. Then if I'm going in this direction, it will be plus and minus. So it'll be plus 6 volts. Let's do a 
a little let's make a note of this so the PD between the points will be 4 volts plus 6 volts but hang on a minute if I'm going around in this direction I'm going from minus to minus now so this will be minus 2 volts because the polarity of this component has been reversed if I'm going across the loop in this direction so overall this would mean that this is 10 minus 2 which is equal to 8 volts and uh, this is a part of Kirchhoff's second law which is often overlooked and would be incredibly useful to know this for physics competitions and for entrance exams for Oxbridge so the correct answer for this question is E 8 volts Please note that you can get absolutely the same answer if you go the opposite way. So if you take a loop in this direction, in this case, you'll get minus two here. Then you get plus six, plus four, which is also equal to eight volts. Okay, folks. So thank you very much for watching. And hopefully this video was useful. Hopefully now you understand Kirchhoff's second law a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.